Hey guys and welcome to the tech side. So I was previously asked a question on the emulators explained video, which I really appreciate by the way. They asked, how do you get an emulator on an iPhone? Well, that's a really great question and we'll get to it after the intro. I wish there was one simple answer to this question, but sadly there isn't. I've narrowed it down to three different methods that don't require a jailbreak. Each one has their ups and downs and you can decide if any of them or which one is worth it to you. The first method to get an emulator is through websites that have apps that are signed by Apple's enterprise program. So first of all, in order to install apps on the iPhone, it needs to be signed to the phone. So whenever you download an app off the App Store per se, that app is being signed to your device. Enterprise certificates can get around that. I'm not 100% sure how they work, but I think basically it allows any app to be signed right from the iPhone for that iPhone. Anyways, these enterprise certificates only work until Apple realizes that they're being used to install emulators onto the phone, which they don't like, so they cancel the certificate. All this means is that after you download the emulator, you'll only have a limited period of time you can actually use the emulator until it stops working. The second method is to use a program called Cydia Impactor. Now, I know it says Cydia, but that doesn't mean that you're going to have to jailbreak your phone or anything. It has nothing to do with the jailbreak. What this program does is it runs on your Mac, PC, or, or even Linux, um, and it signs the apps and installs them on your phone. So Cydia Impactor is great, except that it only stays signed for seven days. So the apps that you install will only work for seven days until you need to reinstall it. Plus, you need to download the app file onto your computer to be able to install it. The third method is to use a website called Builds.io, or the Build Store. The Build Store is a service that signs apps specifically for your device. The catch is that it's $10 per year, but it has every emulator you would want, and even other apps like tweak social media apps and streaming apps like Moviebox or Cinemabox. I think this is the best way to get emulators on your iPhone, even if it's 10 bucks, it's not that expensive, especially since you'll be able to use all the emulators for an entire year. I think that's a pretty good deal. Also, I'm not sponsored by BuildStore or anything. I actually don't even have a BuildStore account myself. I've just read up on them and I've heard a lot of good things and that they're very reputable in getting emulators on your iPhone. Alright, so here are the timestamps for each method if you only want to see one method or something along those lines. Now for method one, uh, we're going to open up our web browser on our iPhone. It can be any web browser. And we're going to go to the web page iEmulators.com. Alright, now that the web page is loaded, we can see all the apps that are up and um, which ones are able to download. So I'm going to download GBA for iOS, so I'm going to go to Apps, and then scroll down till you see the app you want. I'm going to get GBA for iOS again. Go to the Download page. Alright, scroll down. Sometimes you'll get the option to get the signed version and the date trick version. We want the signed version because the date trick only works on older versions of iOS. So press the signed version, and then press install, then install, wait here because it's going to ask you to install, alright, install, and then we can go back to our home page and it's installing, or we'll start installing in a minute. Alright, once your app is installed, you're going to press on it, but we can't use it yet, cancel that, we're going to have to trust the developer, so go into settings, general, Scroll down to you see device management and then press whatever enterprise certificate pops up here. This happens to be the one for GBA for iOS. Press trust and trust and go back to the home screen and then GBA for iOS will work completely fine until the enterprise certificate gets revoked. So that's exactly how method one works. You can use this for every app that's up currently, which again you can see on the home page of the iEmulators website. Alright, so now for method two. For method two, we're going to go on our computer. Doesn't matter if you're on Mac, Windows, whatever will work. The app is supported on pretty much any OS. So open up your web browser here. And then you're going to want to go to the website called CydiaImpactor.com. Alright, now once you're at CydiaImpactor.com, you're going to click on the download link for your OS. So I'm on Mac, so I'm just going to download the Mac one. All right, once it's downloaded, make sure to install it. All 
All right, now once Cydia Impactor is installed, we're going to go to another website called iosemulatorspot.com. Then you're going to go to the IPA page and scroll down till you see the app that you want. So here we go. There's GBA for iOS. And it's going to take me to a download link, and I'm just going to download that through the browser real quick. All right, and then I'm just going to drag that to my desktop real quick so I know where it's at. All right, now that we're done downloading everything we need, we can close our web browser. And next, we're going to make sure that our iPhone is connected via USB. After you've plugged in your phone, you can open up City Impactor here. And you should be able to see your phone's name right here. Now, if you can't, you may want to unplug and replug in your iPhone, but it's not going to work unless you can see the name. Since we can see the name here, we're just going to drag the IPA file right over top of City Impactor. All right, now it's going to ask you for your iTunes information. All this is going to do is use your iTunes information to sign the IPA file, and it's not going to steal your information or anything. The only thing it might do is send the information to Apple, and that's about it. All right, now that you put in your iTunes, it's going to give you this Apple developer warning. If you do have a developer account, press cancel because it's going to take away your developer account. Not exactly sure why. You also may get an email telling you that your developer account has been revoked, but it's fine because you don't have one to begin with. So just press OK, unless you have a developer account, of course. And it's just going to sign the app and put it on your phone. Once it's done, you're going to see it pop right up on the device, but again, it's going to tell you it's an untrusted developer. So we're going to go back into our settings, general, device management, and then you'll see your Apple ID here. I'm going to blur mine out, obviously. And then we're going to press trust and trust again, and then go back to our home screen and it will work just fine again for only seven days. And then you're going to have to re-sign it, but it will work perfectly for those seven days. Now for method three. This one is pretty easy since the website shows you how to do everything, but I'll tell you anyways. Basically, you open up Safari. Now this has to be Safari because you're going to install a profile. And once you've opened up Safari, you're going to go to builds.io, sign up for an account, then press register device, which will then take you to install the profile onto your iPhone. Once you've installed the profile, it'll take you back to the website where you can go ahead and pay. Once you've paid, you may have to wait a couple minutes for it to go through and register your device. But once it's done, you should be able to then install all the apps you want through the website and they won't expire for a whole year. So there you go guys, that's how to install emulators on the iPhone. Let me know if you have any questions down below or tell me if you actually used any of these methods to download emulators on your phone yourself. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.